Hey everyone, in this video I'll explain how changes in temperature, volume, and the amount of particles will affect the pressure of a gas. So let's just review that gas pressure definition one more time. Remember that it's just caused by particles colliding with a surface and as they do so, exerting a force against that surface. So the pressure in this container that you see now on the video screen is caused as those particles collide with its inside walls. What we haven't yet said is what are some ways that we can change that pressure, so make the pressure increase or decrease. So when you're thinking about changing pressure and the different factors that might cause those changes, you've always got to keep bringing your mind back to that idea that it's all caused by the particles colliding with the inside walls of the container. Any other change that gives you more collisions is going to result in more pressure. And likewise, any change that gives you less collisions is going to be resulting in less pressure. So the first factor we'll take a look at that can affect gas pressure are temperature changes. And when we look at these temperature changes, we're going to keep all the other variables constant so that they aren't changing so we can only look at the effect temperature has. So things like volume and the amount of particles, we're going to say, what if all that stays the same and we increased the temperature on the gas, so we made the gas warmer. Well, from that change, there's sort of a cascade of things that happen or a series of ideas we can follow. The first one being, if you've increased the temperature, that means the particles are moving faster. That's what temperature is measuring. So more temperature, by definition, the particles are moving faster, at least on average. Then it makes sense that because they're moving faster, of course, they're going to be colliding with the inside walls of that container more. And because we have more collisions, we will have increased the pressure on this container. Summarizing that statement, we can say that an increase in temperature causes an increase in pressure. That's also one of our key ideas for this video. Make sure you pause and take a minute to write it down. This increase in pressure with increased temperature is one of the reasons that tire blowouts are more common in the summertime. The air gets warmer, so the air in your tires gets warmer and the pressure goes up, making it more likely for them to pop and explode while driving down the road. All of the opposite changes are true for a decrease in temperature as well. If you make the gas colder, particles will be moving more slowly. And if they're moving slower, then of course they're going to be colliding less. And if they're colliding less, of course we're going to get less pressure. So a decrease in temperature is going to cause a decrease in pressure, the second of our key ideas. Putting both of those statements side by side, you can see an increase in one causes an increase in the other, or a decrease in one causes a decrease in the other, a type of relationship we know as a direct relationship. Now let's look at how a change in volume can affect the change in pressure. We'll of course be keeping other variables constant, like temperature will be staying the same, and the amount of particles will be staying the same. If you increase the volume, a common mistake is people think the particles are going to change their speed. Remember, we are keeping the temperature the same, so the particles don't move faster and they don't move slower, but they are in a larger space. And because they're in a larger space, they have farther to travel in between hitting the walls of the container. It's a, now a bigger container. And because it's a bigger space and they have a further distance to travel between each collision with each wall, they're going to be colliding less. And because they're colliding less, we're going to see less pressure. A good way to think about this is to imagine yourself running around, say, inside of a gymnasium. It's a really big space, so you're not going to be able to touch the walls of that gymnasium very often. It's the same thing with these particles, and an increased volume will have less collisions. So we can summarize by saying that an increase in volume causes a decrease in pressure, our third key idea. The opposite effect is seen with a decrease in volume. The particles keep moving the same speed, but they will be colliding more. Now they're in a much smaller space, so they can collide with the walls more often. More collisions means a greater pressure. So a decrease in volume is going to cause an increase in pressure. This is also known as a compressed gas, where you take a large sample of gas and essentially squeeze it into a very small volume, our fourth key idea for this video. Putting these two ideas side by side, you can see that an increase in one causes a decrease in the other, a relationship we know as inverse. And our last factor for this video is changes in particle quantity. That means adding more particles or taking particles away. Of course, to look at this factor, we'll keep temperature the same and volume the same. But if we add more particles, as long as the temperature stays the same, they don't move faster, they don't move slower, but there are more of them, and because there's more of them, they'll be colliding more, 
and since they're colliding more, the pressure will increase. So an increase in particle quantity will cause an increase in pressure. We take advantage of this every time we use a pump to inflate a bike or car tire. The pump is simply adding more particles into the tire so they collide more and increase the pressure inside the tire. And by now you should pretty much see how this works. So by the same logic, a decrease in particle quantity will cause a decrease in pressure. This is of course a direct relationship since a decrease in one causes a decrease in the other or an increase in one causes an increase in the other. And that's it for this video, here's a brief summary.